Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dear viewers, welcome back once again to the Islam and Life and today's third segment of Islam and Life. I am your host Raju Ali is here again and conducting this show with the very respectful and honorable Vice Principal of Jamia Islamia Birmingham, Sheikh Faisal Haq Abdul Aziz. Today we are discussing and listening lectures from our Sheikh about one of the major sins of Islam considered as a mother of all sins, telling lies. We we'll learn lots of things about uh, telling lies, what is telling lie, what is the difference between truth and false, the, what is the sign of a uh, trustworthy person and what is the sign of a liar and what, why considers lying is a great sin, we we'll learn lots of things. And we also try to answer your questions, some of your questions we got through our social media. As you all know, we are very active in our social media. If you go to YouTube, you can just write down our program's name and date. You can find out our episodes and you can watch it if you missed it in the live telly. And also you can find it on our Facebook. It's at Ikra Bangla, uh, www.facebook.com slash Ikra Bangla. Or if you have any question right now, you can call us on the given number at the screen. The number is 0207-096-0405. This is the number you can call us and talk to us if you have any opinion or any questions regarding our show. Or also if you have any questions regarding our today's topic or any Muslim asylum regarding the life and Islam. Because we all know Islam is a full code of conduct of life. So no questions will be uh, misjudged or no question will be small. We'll try to answer them accordingly, inshallah. Without further delay, let's go back to our Sheikh once again. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I would like to thank you, Be not at the end of this show, or the beginning of this segment, because we are having a very wonderful show now today, because we learn lots of things, because at the very important topic of today's show, the major sins, the mother of all sins, lies, because this is the very fundamentals of all sins, because if we can forbid ourselves from telling lies, then we can, the, our life will be, nowadays maybe for the certain time will be difficult, but we can learn and we can go to a path where we should all wants to go in the end of the day. Mm -hmm. It's true. I agree with you. So we have lots of questions on mm -hmm. in, in our hand. Uh, should we start of to course, answer inshallah. them? Inshallah. So please allow me. Um, we answered the first question okay, uh, okay. about the. Uh, it was about Isra al marriage, mm -hmm. and the second question is. Um, it's very important and valid. Uh, one of a brother or sister uh, might ask about how do we take preparation about the Ramadan. Mashallah, very nice question, Mashallah. Uh, someone has asked a very nice question that how do I take preparation for the holy month of Ramadan, Mashallah. That's a very nice question, Mashallah. Uh, for this wonderful question, Jazakallah khairan to brother or sister whoever asked this question, Mashallah. And through your question, Inshallah, many other brothers will take the heat and they will also start preparation for the holy month of Ramadan. My brothers and my sisters, as far as the month of Ramadan is concerned, bear in mind, this is the best month of the Islamic calendar. Twelve months of the year, month of Ramadan is the best month. And as we know, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given uh, messengership to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the month of Ramadan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, given the Holy Quran in the month of Ramadan. Therefore, month of Ramadan is the best month of the Islamic calendar. If something is best, if something is important, we start making the preparation for it earlier prior to weeks and months. If the exam is the final exam, okay, is going to take place in the month of May and June, we'll start preparation for it from the month of January, February, that I am facing a, a final exam. My result, it depends many things of my life on it. Okay, we'll start the preparation for it because it's important. If it is GCSE exam or if it is A-level exams or if it's something like very important that a person's life depends on it, we'll start preparation of it uh, prior to many of the months. Month of Ramadan is the best month of a person's life. Our ancestors, they used to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right from the month of Shawwal. 11 months prior that oh Allah, please do not cause me death until I reach the month of Ramadan. Many of the ancestors, they used to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that oh Allah, do not cause me death until I reach the holy month of Ramadan. Six months prior to the month of Ramadan. In the hadith of Musnad Ahmad, Musnad ibn Abi Shayba, uh, the hadith is weak in the in the chain of narration is weak but uh, uh, when there is a weak hadith if it comes to the virtues of the actions it is taken into consideration that a dua which rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam to make when the month of rajab is to come which is allahumma barik lana fi rajaba wa sha'ban wa ramadan 
that oh Allah grant us blessings in the month of Rajab and Sha'ban and please oh Allah take us to the month of Ramadan. I, in other words, Ya Allah, do not cause us death until we reach to the holy month of Ramadan. I'm saying again, this hadith uh, in the chain of narration is weak. Therefore, as soon as the month of Rajab has come, you have seen like many people are uh, forwarding this dua in the WhatsApp and in then Facebook and then in Twitter. Okay, now something which is weak, keep it to the level. Don't make it as if like something which is like farat or compulsory. Okay, so once or twice you made this dua, Allahumma barik lana fi Rajab wa Sha'ban wa balighna Ramadan, up to a level is okay. But overacting with it, then you giving priority and importance to something which is, uh, uh, which doesn't have that much value, you giving it more value to it. Okay, so in this hadith you can see Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is also making a preparation. That he's asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that wa Allah grant us the blessings in the month of Rajab and Sha'ban and wa Allah please take us to the uh, holy month of Ramadan. So my brothers and my sisters, as far as the preparation for the holy month of Ramadan is concerned, Alhamdulillah, in our houses, what we see, our mothers and our, mashallah, elders, they are quite busy uh, making the physical preparation of the Ramadan, okay? Buying this, buying that, okay? And preparing all the things which they need to have in the iftar time. Okay, that's a good preparation as well, no problem. No one is abandoning that. That's allowed as well. But the main preparation is the spiritual and the mental preparation. Okay, the spiritual preparation is that from now on I should be watching that if I am uh, praying five daily salah in congregation, okay, then I should try to do more optional salah as well as a preparation of the holy month of Ramadan. That in the month of Ramadan I can be more, uh, mashallah, energetic and I can do more worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the month of Ramadan. If now I am only doing the five uh, out of five, only three salah in congregation and two I can't. I should build up and try to make it five, okay? Similarly, I should try to give some charity in the part of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I should try to be more uh, devoted to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mashallah, many of the sisters in the month of Ramadan, many of them who don't do hijab, but in the month of Ramadan, they do hijab. Many of the sisters who do presenting in TV as well, okay, prior to Ramadan, they don't do hijab, but in the month of Ramadan, they with the hijab at least. Are you doing? So as far as the physical preparation is concerned, we do it. And on top of that, we have to do the spiritual preparation, which is that spiritually I am uh, drawing nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the third preparation, which is the mental. That shaitan will come and say, Ya Allah, one whole month of duration without food and drink during the long hours of England. 18 to 19 hours. This year we'll have okay, a, the we'll longest. Have. Okay, we'll have, we'll the, have the, longest. the longest. Okay, but never mind. Alhamdulillah, with the uh, will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we've been doing it for the past, past, past several yes. years. We are preparing. Okay, so we are preparing year. for the past several years. Last week we had the month of Ramadan in the, from the 10th of June. Okay, so we had gone past the longest days of the year, which is 21st, 22nd, and the 23rd mm -hmm. of June, mm -hmm. which are the longest days. Okay, we went past. Okay, so year before we started fasting from the 21st of June. The year before from probably the uh, 2nd of July or something yeah so as far as the longest days are concerned we've been through so this year as well when the month of Ramadan may start from the 27th of May okay may <laughs> start from the 27th of May oh <laughs> mashallah okay what arriving okay so at that time the mental preparation is the shaitan will come and try to inspire you negatively at that time kick shaitan out okay if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the command Allah knows we have the strength hence Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the command therefore we will be able to do so inshallah so month of Ramadan has three kind of preparation the first and the foremost is the spiritual preparation okay in advancing towards the uh, to a devotion to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala number two the mental preparation that we can do it it's not beyond our capacity and the third which mashallah everyone does okay which is the physical preparation that buying things and the sorting out things for the iftar and everything and the fourth one is uh, uh, keeping your time okay because Ramadan comes and then many people have uh, the work they have the full-time job they have the shift and everything and everything then try to sort you out with the, with the people with the employers in a way that you don't miss your job as well and you don't uh, it doesn't disturb you to fulfill the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala many of the schools in the inner city areas in uh, England uh, okay they shorten the time they do uh, half an hour early home times, etc., etc., just to support the Muslim kids and the Muslim mothers who are fasting during the holy month of Ramadan. So these kind of things, inshallah. So all this is considered as preparation for the holy month of Ramadan. And above everything, my brothers and my sisters, remember that for everything great, we have a great plan. So the month of Ramadan is the greatest opportunity to be spiritually close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So therefore, it needs a great preparation and a great plan. Inshallah, everyone will be doing it, inshallah.
Jazakallah, Sheikh. Jazakallah. Thank you. Thank you very much. I would like to just put two two things you on that. You can put many. You can uh, add many <laughs> things. You're a big Sheikh as well. Jazakallah. <laughs> Sheikh, it's, your, it's an honor to Allah be Allah with Allah you Allah all Allah the time. Allah. So uh, I would like to just say, our family, when do they physical uh, preparation, like buying foods or preparing about, like thinking about their, all their necessity? I think they are trying to save times while they're in the Ramadan. This is the main, one very of the main good, Very good. Very good. See, uh, mashallah. See? Uh, Subhanallah, very so nice point, positive point. Save time shopping in Ramadan, do it now. That's do it good. now, yes. Mashallah. And also, yeah. I would like to thank one of some of the very big employees uh, because they do create a certain point. While still they are not uh, participating in the Ramadan, but they're still doing their part. They shorten the time, That's the true. schools, yeah. the offices, and they give us the holidays. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. they, they took care because I had a lot of friends who do work in the city, and I find out them they're like, their bosses and the leaders, they are very helpful during the month of Ramadan. May Allah grant them the rewards. Yeah, inshallah. Inshallah, Zazakallah. I think uh, we should be grateful to that. Of course, inshallah, yes. Okay. So let's move to our next questions. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's about our today's topic. And uh, it's, it's a, I'm not sure it's, it's a bit funny or it's a very related. It's funny and related. So someone asked questions. Uh, is it uh, allowed to tell a lies to your spouse? <laughs> Is it allowed to tell lies to your spouse? As far as telling lies in principle is concerned, we are not allowed to tell lies to anybody. We are not allowed to tell lies to anybody. That's in principle. However, because husband and wife, they have such a strong connection, and it's a long ongoing process, okay? It's not only for a day or two, okay? Or a week or a month or a year. No, it's such a, when a person gets married, when a couple get married, it's for lifelong. They both have the intention that this marriage will continue until the end of my life. Okay? Therefore, sometimes in the life, some situation comes. Some situation comes. In the hadith, Rasulullah has given permission of telling lies. But that lie is actually not the lie which is black against white or white against uh, black, which is a totally lie. Are you with me? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa I think the brother is indicating towards that hadith. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa has said in the hadith, which is in the term of hadith is known as Tawriya. Tawriya means that when you say something, when you say something, you are not telling lies. But the person opposite hearing you, they might get happy of what you are saying. And they might believe you. If I just give you one example, then you will understand. When the people of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam, they wanted to go to the Mela, where there will be uh, idol worshipping, etc., etc. They came to take Ibrahim alayhi salatu as well. Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam said, Ana saqeem, I am ill. Now on that day, Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam wasn't actually ill, the physical illness. He had the spiritual illness towards these idols. Therefore, Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam never wanted to go and participate in the Mela. Are you with me? Therefore, that saqeem, I am ill, is not a lie, it's a tawriya. Tawriya means the person who is speaking, he knows what it means, and the person opposite listening as well, he'll believe and understand. Another example, Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, when he was traveling with his wife Sarah, okay, the tyrant king at the time, anyone going with the spouse, okay, who was pretty, he will na'udhu billah take her and abuse her. However, if the police of the tyrant king, they discover that she is the sister of this man, then at that time they won't do any kind of harm to her. So when Sayyidina Ibrahim والسلام, was walking past with his spouse Sarah the uh, spy came and they wanted to take her Billah, to the king. Sayyidina Ibrahim والسلام, said, she is my sister. Now Ibrahim والسلام, wasn't lying, she is the sister. All the children of Adam, their brothers and sisters to each another. Are you hmm. So these in the term of hadith, they are known as kidb, literal kidb, i.e. tawriya. Tawriya means you are speaking something, you know what it means, but the person listening from you, they may get a positive meaning of it. So when Rasulullah has given permission to the husband to tell uh, uh, and, uh, to the wives, it doesn't mean to say something which is totally wrong. For example, the husband went to the shopping, okay? And he knows when he comes back from the shopping, if he misses anything, then his missus gets really hyper, okay? His wife really gets angry. So at that time, 
if he says, okay, I'll get something much better than you for tomorrow. I'll get something much better for you than uh, today, today for tomorrow. Sure. Okay. Now tomorrow he went and he got the same stuff, same value. This will not be considered as lies because he said the word better. I'll get something better for you tomorrow. He said this in order to make her cool down, keep her calm. Therefore, he has said that. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says, in that context, it is allowed. Not that, for example, he doesn't have anything and he says, I have something. He doesn't have a car and he says, no, I have a Ferrari. You me? I have a BMW. That's totally lie. It is not allowed. Okay? Only those things which are considered as Tawriya in the term of the Hadith, it is allowed. That the husband says, tomorrow I'll get from shopping something for you which is better than what I have today. Okay, this is allowed in order to keep her happy and keep her cool and calm. Okay, so Zakala Sheikh, just to point out one of the funny things about the shopping, you, as you said, I know someone and he's a big brother of mine and uh, he's a very famous in terms of in his field. I hope he's not watching you. Uh, no, I hope <laughs> if he's watching me, that, that, that that's fine. Mind. And he did shopping for uh, lots of things because he did lots of the bought lots of things like more than like around like more than 100 pounds or something like that but he misses a small thing mm -hmm. and as soon as he got into the home and uh, he find out he misses one thing mm -hmm. and he had no energy and it's, it's a night time then he had to wait till the whole night to work at like uh, the, the, the wife of his to cool down no. and then he told <laughs> her that okay the next day we'll go for a more shopping and we'll go to the jewelry shop must <laughs> <Inshallah>. <laughs> so okay. it was a literally things Allah and uh, Allah. maybe Allah. not the next day they went to the next two or, two or three I days later are not getting offended no, it's just no, one of those really. things it's, okay. it's, it's a thing it happens um, uh, it's a very important and uh, very in terms of the things it's related to this and how do you consider and classified how this is sahih Mashallah, very nice question. It's an academic question as well. Somebody's asked, how do we classify a hadith to be sahih hadith? Mashallah, very nice question. My brothers and my sisters, nowadays, everyone, uh, when they quote, they say, is the hadith sahih? And many a time, people take the word sahih as literally. And they say sahih means correct. And if it is not sahih, it's incorrect. But this is totally wrong. Sahih is a term of the hadith. Terms they have to be taken into consideration according to the terminologies. The terms and the terminologies cannot be translated into the literal meaning. So Arabic word sahih, we cannot translate that into English as correct. Or the Arabic word da'if, we cannot translate it in English as incorrect. Sahih and da'if and hasan, these are the terms of the hadith. They have their meanings according to the terms of the hadith. And we have to take those into consideration according to the terms of the hadith. A hadith is classified as uh, sahih if it meets five conditions. Number one, in Arabic we say ittisal sanad that from the narrator to Rasulullah it has a attached chain of narration. The chain of transmission is attached. It doesn't have anyone missing from it. Number two, adalatul ruwat. The narrator narrating, he is sound and he is authentic. Number three, Dabtur Ruwat. The narrator who is narrating, they have to be sound in memory. Okay, either preserving the hadith in their memories or by writing. Number four, Adam Shuzuz. The narrator who is narrating, he does not go against those narrators who are more authentic than him. And number five, Adam Ulla. The hadith should not have any kind of hidden defects in them. If these five conditions are met, then according to the terms of the muhaddithun, this hadith is classified as hadith -e sahih. Sah if any of the condition is missing from these five, then the hadith becomes hadith da'if. Okay? Literally, we translate it as weak hadith, but this is a translation, not a classical term of that hadith. And the third is, if the memory of the narrator is, is bit weak, not as sharp, but bit weak, then the hadith becomes hasan. Okay. So these are the terms of the hadith. We have to take them into consideration. According to the terms of the hadith, we can't translate them sahih as correct, hasan as good, and da'if as incorrect. We can't do that. Okay. We have to take them as sahih, hasan, and da'if, according to the terms of the hadith. Jazakallah, Sheikh. Thank you uh, very much. 
Uh, in terms of that, if uh, just a quick question is about to related to these questions. If a person found out in the time of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he 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 told a lie, he told a lie. Will his, his later will his, his hadith will be accepted in, in, in any time? Who you mean by the narrator? Narrator, narrator, narrator. yes. Okay, another very nice question as well. And it's again, it's an academic question. When we do the scrutiny of the narrators, okay? For example, we have Imam Bukhari here. And from Imam Bukhari, the hadith is narrated by, uh, in between Imam Bukhari and Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there are just say three people. Okay, three people. So Imam Bukhari at the bottom, then his sheikh, his ustad, then his sheikh, his ustad, and then his sheikh, his ustad, and then the sahabi, and then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The scrutiny will only be made on the people who are after sahaba. As far as the sahaba are concerned, they are considered all authentic. The entire ummah unites in this issue that as sahaba tu kulluhum udul. All the sahaba, they are authentic in order to uh, transmit Quran and Hadith from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the Ummah. Therefore, all the Sahaba, they are taken into consideration as a Sahaba to kulluhum udul. All the Sahaba, they are authentic. They didn't tell lies. In transmitting the Hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So whenever any research is made on the chain of narration of the Hadith, Sahaba are totally left out. Because Sahaba are the group who are highly recommended, highly respected. They are not the uh, group of people to be made scrutiny or criticized about. Because they are the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Only the scrutiny is made on the people who are after Sahaba. Those Sahaba who came after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the scrutiny is made on them. So starting from Tabi'in. Tabi'in, that's it, the followers of the Sahaba. Followers. From them the scrutiny is made. Okay. Now, if the criticism or if the research is made and they were found that they were telling lies. Now, if they were telling lies in the daily life for any reason, once or twice, that will be taken into consideration as a defect, as a minor defect, okay? Not as a major. However, if they were caught fabricating on behalf of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa that's a major defect. At that time, their hadith will not be accepted. And if they narrate the hadith, it will be considered as fabricator. And the hadith will be considered as fabricated. Barakallah. It's an Barakallah. academic issue. I'll tell you about level yeah, yeah, mistakes easily. Inshallah. 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 Zazakallah, Sheikh. Thank you very much. I think we are at the very end of our today's show. Okay. We, we have some more questions. I will try to answer them in next uh, Inshallah. week. Inshallah. Inshallah. Um, please allow us to uh, finish the show. Okay. And uh, we'd like to thank you once again uh, no to be here and give us some lectures and knowledge about the Islam and life. Um, dear viewers, time has gone. Is the very end of our today's show. We I, we hope you enjoyed our today's show. So, uh, if we do any mistake, please forgive us, and please bear with us for the next week, and we'll we'll come back on next week same time, inshallah. Till then, take care. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.